mass is like a diamond. And if you have a diamond and you're gonna put it in a ring on your hand, are you gonna surround it with, a f with facets of gold and silver? Or are you gonna put that diamond in mud, made a ring made out of clay? Well, of course you're gonna put that diamond in gold. So everything on the exterior should glorify God. And that's what we're here for, to glorify God. The renovation is for the future and uh, we have to make it today. We have to make it today because it is our duty to transmit the, the flame, the torch. And I think that it is uh, very important for the future of the church. It's really an amazing experience to sort of step into something that is so historic and it gives you a sense of security and um, history and appreciation and connection to the past that I've never experienced before. It's a, a treasure for Catholics and I think it's a great treasure for the entire city as well. And anyone who appreciates history, culture, beauty uh, should be very concerned about the preservation of this church. St. Stanislaus is full of history. Uh, St. Stanislaus is like the mother church of the south side. We were the first, and all the other churches that surround St. Stanislaus were built after. And it was just because the, 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 the Polish immigrants here they, and the German immigrants, they just started growing and growing and growing. But ultimately, it all started here. Thinking back on those immigrants and, and what they must have done and how much time they must have dedicated in building this gorgeous church. This was an important jewel for the, the whole community and what a legacy to, to leave behind and for us to enjoy now. This church, built almost 150 years ago, is magnificent, very uh, impressive, very spectacular, and built by very simple, immigrants arriving here almost with nothing and this is a good lesson for us because when you observe St. Stanislaus you realize that with a strong faith everything is possible. Each family was assessed $30. Well back in 1872 $30 it was like a one month's wages and they voluntarily gave this money because they needed a house to worship. So when you, see, when you hear that, I mean, the dedication of these early immigrants to America, they had no church and they sacrificed a lot. It was in 1893, there were 500 baptisms that year. I think 96 marriages, that's incredible. That, you know, 500, 500 baptisms in one year. You know what, I mean, how could you not want to be a part of that? You definitely feel like participating in the Latin Mass, you feel like you have the best of both worlds, especially for younger people. You know, you, you're very much in touch with what's going on in contemporary society, but you're connected to a tradition that goes back to the third or fourth centuries in terms of the Mass and it goes back 150 years in terms of the parish. The parish experienced remarkable growth for over 100 years. Thousands of souls came to St. Stanislaus and were nourished in the faith, were baptized, educated, married, and at the end of their lives buried from this parish. For the thousands of parishioners of the parish, liturgy was the center of life. But there were also other activities and social groups that were a huge part of the, the life of the parishioners of St. Stanislaus. So impressive was the growth of the parish that it became, in effect, a mother church for all the other parishes in the south side of Milwaukee. I was talking to one of the faithful from the old parish and we were talking about, you know, the changes that were made 
to St. Stanislaus during the 60s. In certain ways, they did do some restoration work, and at the same time, that restoration went into a renovation. You could see, wow, they really altered things, and they altered it to accommodate the new, the new mass. 1960s, people wanted something new um, and less classic and traditional. Uh, so we have today in this church uh, uh, stained glasses on the windows which are not in the style of the church. They built scaffoldings on the outside of the church and they broke the old stained glass windows so it fell into the church. There were, you know, women from the Polish community outside, you know, saying their rosary and weeping over the destruction of something so beautiful. In the 60s, what you saw was a, a belief that everything that came before we have to hold suspect, and everything that's new is, by virtue of the fact that it's new, it's automatically something that's noble. And so I think there was a great deal of um, skepticism about the past, uh, distrust about the past, and a certain hubris that our new ideas are somehow better than what we've received for 2,000 years. Unfortunately, because of the changing of the neighborhood, the neighborhood of Mitchell Street was no more Polish. This um, prestigious Polish parish was on the wane. It was a time of decline. Thanks to the, the presence here of Bishop Dolan, uh, the, the Latin Mass was brought here, and I think the Latin Mass, I think that the Latin Mass brought in Saint Stanislaus uh, a new impetus with young families, more people, and also uh, a new uh, energy. Uh, we saw quickly that this church with 50 years without works, it was very urgent to make something for the maintenance of this beautiful building. I was privileged as the photographer to sort of see some of the things that had had been in ruin. It's sort of starting to, to break down and, uh, and it was sort of sad to see. Uh, you know, you see some of these things that were so gorgeous once upon a time and you see how it just hadn't been loved. It had been kind of neglected over, over time. When I got to St. Stanislaus and I just started walking through everything, I saw that there was a lot of well, clutter. But also you could tell that there were parts of the church that maintenance had not been kept up on. There was a lot of water damage to the rectory and in parts of the church there was signs of extensive water damage. The rectory had suffered so much water damage was because for many, many years there was nobody living here because the parish had declined in size. So that was one of our first goals is to, to get the water leaks plugged uh, and then start repairing the damage. Now as far as the church goes, the first phase was the narthex. The narthex is what we call, like what some people call the vestibule. And one of the reasons why is that because that's where the people come in off the street. And it was carpeting, it was, it was very unattractive, and it wasn't very welcoming. The narthex, it's certainly more dignified now. Um, it has a, a certain, it looks much more like a church um, than a, a waiting room. I know that they've installed these beautiful doors into the nave, and, uh, which helps also serve as a, a sound barrier for, for all the little babies that are making their voices heard. But it's a beautiful job that they did. The detail is, is astounding. Instead of uh, purple carpeting of the 60s, we installed a nice uh, floor with tiles, with a nice and noble color of stone and also we installed beautiful chandeliers uh, which fit very well with the, with the style of St. Stanislaus.
It's very important to remember that the restorations that are going on now are not always visible, um, but this is a historic building. I mean, late 1800s, 1870s. So it's understandable that there's going to be a lot of wear and tear on the inner parts of the building that we don't even see, the roofing, the heating, air conditioning. So a lot of the work has already begun on that. The existing heating system was very, very, very uh, inadequate, but also was very inefficient. If you're going to fix the heating, how much more to do the air conditioning? The increase wasn't so significant that it wasn't possible. But the biggest thing that, besides people's comfort, we have to realize with the heating and the air conditioning is that when a building is not air conditioned nowadays, especially an old building like the church, you know, the interior temperature during the summer months can well exceed 100 degrees, especially in the, in the rafters where the plaster is. Well, as the plaster heats up, it starts cracking. Same thing with the winter. So by improving the heating in the building and also having air conditioning, we're taking these steps forward for the preservation of the, of the tiles, uh, of the ceiling plaster, of all the, the statuary that's carved the medallions on the ceilings and the walls. We've spent money uh, restoring the, elect the electrical. Some of the chandeliers started failing and the lights were burning out because the wiring was bad. When you have a church that was built in 1872, there's always going to be something that's going to happen. The mortar that is used to basically glue the bricks together, over years it starts to deteriorate and therefore gaps form, cracks form. Well tuck pointing is when they grind out the old mortar and they pack the joints between the bricks with new mortar therefore making it a structurally sound, but also it keeps the water out of the building. It keeps the water out of the bricks. When I got here, there were many uh, areas of the church as well as the rectory where the tuck pointing has failed and there's still a lot more to do. That was the reason why the, uh, the mosaic of Our Lady of Chesticahova was compromised. So the water was coming in through the poor joints and the brickwork our Lady of Chestakova was repaired, but what was so beautiful is, as I was taking pictures of it, there was another person who was just a visitor who was taking pictures of the same thing. So people that are outside, they see all of it, and, and, uh, and, and they see the damage and when things aren't being fixed. And if we're to bring people in, it was lovely that it was, it was repaired. One of my favorite things that they've done is they've, they've renovated or, or made a new area in the outside uh, for everybody to gather, which is just beautiful. So when you walk out of the church, there's a, a beautiful statue of Our Lady, and uh, it has all the flowers and all that. And then when you walk around the side, there is a little grotto with, uh, with St. Joseph and a little grassy area for all of us. So one of the first things that we got to use this space for was, uh, was when the bishop came and it was for a confirmation and it was just lovely. The next step of the, in the process of renovation of St. Stanislaus will be the sanctuary of the church. The sanctuary is a place where the altar is. This sanctuary was very modified in the 60s with a big podium of concrete, so we have to remove this big volume and weight of concrete to uh, find the level of the floor as it was 50 years ago. There will be steps leading up to the high altar so that the priest will no longer celebrate the Mass at the freestanding altar, he'll celebrate Mass at the high altar that was built in, and when the church was founded. So part of the projects in the rest restoration of the sanctuary is, uh, like I said, removal of the concrete, move, removal of the carpet, uh, putting in a communion rail as opposed to a temporary one that we have now. In the 60s, some things really didn't even make sense. Um, for instance, removing the communion rails. Um, and it's, it's sad to see those two remnants remaining because you see the attention to detail, the 
that went into making those altar rails. And to think of someone just literally t taking a hammer to them and removing them is, is almost painful. And so I know that that's one of the goals is to, to reinstall beautiful communion rails into the church, which I think will serve the original architectural integrity of the building very well. It will be also a good opportunity to remove uh, the purple carpet, uh, which covers everything in this night church, and to install a floor uh, fitting well with the style of this uh, building. The new floor will look like, sto like stone, for question of money and also of weight, because there is a basement under the church, we have to choose something light. So the floor will be uh, tiles of ceramic with an appearance of stone. With the, the, re the restorations going on now, bringing back what was once here, you're seeing an influx of younger Catholics. Um, and it's not, just, it's not just one or two, it's, it's lots of them. It's a, a, a sort of a city on a hill here where we preserve so much of what's been lost. And I think, I hope, will be an example to other parishes here and other, uh, other Catholics and priests and laity alike that this is something for all Catholics. It's not just for uh, a, a special niche group who you know, it's kind of like our thing, we do the Latin Mass, but for everyone else doesn't have to really worry about it. Like, no, this is, Pope Benedict made clear that this is something all Catholics should appreciate and uh, be able to experience. And that's what I think is the, the great hope for, for St. Stanislaus. St. Stanislaus is not a museum. Uh, St. Stanislaus is, is a place of Catholic life. The age of the people who come here is young. The Catholicism of tomorrow is amongst these young babies and it is a sign of uh, hope for the future of the church. I didn't grow up with the Latin Mass, so it was really kind of beautiful and theatrical, God bless you. Um, and, uh, and kind of intimidating. And, and so when you walk in, not only do they have the reverence and the beautif beautiful part down pat, but they're very welcoming and loving and there's so many things to do there. And, and when we give to those things, just like those immigrants did, when we give to that, it is priceless and it will give for, for the rest of time. The new families that have come to St. Stanislaus with, you know, with lots of children. And that's the future of the church. That's the future of St. Stanislaus. And it's important that we have a place for these new and young families to come and worship and come and have the Mass in the, uh, well, the extraordinary or the traditional form. We're restoring history in itself. I, 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 I sometimes think about if you could bring back the immigrants from 1872 who sacrificed a month's wage to build this beautiful church, if you invited them back to St. Stanislaus right now, and then to have us say, you know what, we're trying to restore this to how you made it, I think they would be pleased. I think they would be pleased and say, well, job well done.